Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be um, making a animation that plays when you hit a button on your keyboard. So I'll give you an example right now. So here's the example. As you can see, I come into the game and if I was to just do uh, one mouse button, one click, so here you can hear this, you can see nothing happens. But when I hit Q on my keyboard, the animation plays. So this is a simple animation that I animated a long time ago, and it's a simple backflip. But as you can see, when I click Q on my keyboard, it does a little backflip. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do this and um, how you can incorporate it to, uh, to many different things. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, so first of all, the place that I'm going to be putting this script is inside of the starter player scripts down here. Um, and this is because this is where you can access the humanoid because the way that I'm going to be scripting this animation is I'm going to load the animation onto the player's humanoid. Now, I know that sounds complicated, but basically imagine me loading the animation to the player so that it can actually play. So I'm basically putting the animation into the player so that uh, I can make it so that it's built in and then all it is is just firing it, making it making it play. So what we're going to need to do to start off with is we're going to need to insert a local script. And now in here, I'm going to first off starting some variables. So I need to get the uh, user input service. So that's what we can be using today. Now this is an advanced, uh, this is an advanced uh, tool. And basically what it does is it allows you to use something called uh, or yeah, you, it allows you to do input.keycode. And now this allows you to make it so that when you can detect whether you hit something on your um, keyboard. So whether I click Q, W, E, or even if it, if you just hit any key, uh, any key um, user input service could do, uh, could run and, uh, and print it out in the output or something like that. So, um, let's just start it off with a variable. So I'm going to do local user input service. Actually, I'm going to call it UIS, user input service. And what we want to do is it's it's a service. So we want to get the service. So we want to do get service. And then we want to do user input service. And there it is. So this is what it should be looking like so far. We are basically getting the user input service and we are putting it inside of a variable. And then now um, I'm going to reference where the animation is just so that it's uh, easier to do it. So the way that I'm going to be laying this out is I over here in the local script, I'm going to be adding the animation inside of this so that I get the animation straight from the local script. And then up here in the animation ID is where I'm going to be pasting it. But we'll, we'll animate in a minute. But for now, I can come in back into this and we can get the animation. So as you can see, it's basically just, uh, the, it's the child of the local script that we're scripting in right now. So the only thing I need to do is first of all, create the animation, create the variable, sorry. And then um, do script.animation because all we are doing is saying uh, this script uh, and the animation beneath it. So now we can come ahead and start writing the input. So um, basically I'm going to be doing whether the input has, began, uh, has begun. So uh, whether it detects any source of key, uh, key uh, press. So whether it, it could be anything and this would be fired. So we're going to do UIS, UIS. Actually, I'm going to change this just to make it easier for you guys. So user and then input and service. Just that you guys know it is user input service that I'm using. So user input service there, dot input began. And then, so that's when somebody hits the keyboard, that's the event. And then we want to connect to that. And then we want to run a function through this. And then we want to um, we want to get their input. So which input it is. So let's uh, let's reference that here, just like that. And then now, so basically we're going to be grabbing the input. We basically we're going to detect which key that hit. 
So now we are saying um, when somebody hits any key on their keyboard, but any key, when somebody hits anything, um, connect to that and run this function and then show us this input. So whatever input it is, run this by that. And I accidentally just messed that up. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so now we need to actually detect what key it is. So we need to say that um, if it's this key, then do this. So I'm going to do if the input, so uh, yeah, if, if the key is key code, so we're grabbing the key code, if this is, um, is equivalent to, uh, let's use an enum. So basically an enum is, if you've ever noticed when you're writing something, so if I was to do user input service, you see I get this list down here. Basically, if I was to run an enum, it would be like a list like that and it would show every possible um, outcome that I could use. So as you can see, I have all these things that I can choose from right now. So if I was to do enum dot key code, and then I was to do this, another dot, you can see that I have all the different keys that I can use from. And um, and it could be anything that all of these are able uh, are able to be used. So it could be, uh, it could be, well, E, maybe, if you're trying to pick up something, or it could even be something like the um, joystick on a, uh, well, look, on a thumbstick, on, like, a, a controller. So you can see here, thumbstick one, thumbstick two. Um, and then, look, we want to find Q. So there's Q. And then we want to use this. And then, yes. Okay, cool. Right, now we have the key code called Q. We're basically saying now that if their input is equivalent to Q, so if their input is Q, then, and then now we want to actually start loading the animation to the player. So we want to get the player, so let's do local player. Uh, so we're starting a variable, and then I'm going to do game.players dot local player because we can now do that inside of a because we're inside of a local script so i can come ahead and do this and then we want to do local character equals player player dot character so we are taking the player's character so we're grabbing the player from the character uh, we're grabbing the character from the player and then we want to get the humanoid now. So we're going to need to grab that from the character, but we're going to need to wait for it because it 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 could take some time or it could, we need to wait for it basically. So I'm gonna have to do character, colon, wait for child. And then we need to get the humanoid. So I need to wait for it and wait for child, if you remember from the last video or the uh, from the series about um, about how to build a Roblox game with the leader stats, we need to wait until it's fully loaded until it runs because otherwise it could not run properly because we need to load the animation to the proper thing. We don't want it to load halfway through and then it just to break. So now we can actually create the variable for the animation. So let's do local animation, well, uh, anim, I'm gonna call it. And uh, now we can get the humanoid. And now we want to, so basically we're grabbing the humanoid, the, pl the character's, uh, the player's humanoid. And then now we want to load the animation onto that. So I'm going to do load animation and then I'm going to put inside of this the animation. And that is because we're referencing the variable up here, which is grabbing this. And then now we want to come down here and do animation colon play. Open bracket, close bracket. So we are firing it and saying that we want it to play. But right now we have no ID in there. And that's not good. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to open up my plugins down here. And you want to have downloaded or you want to have enabled the Roblox um, animation editor. And then as you can see down here, I have it uh, the build rig and I also have the animation editor. And you want these two. So I'm going to go to the build rig and I want to build a mesh rig. And then as you can see over here, we now have 
uh, we now have this um, dummy, this dummy. So the animation, uh, the place that we're going to put the animation on, the character. And then now we can put the animation editor to it and then select it. And then now we can give it a name. So I'm going to do wave. So I'm just going to create a simple wave down here. So what you need to remember is that I'm not an, I'm not a professional animator, so I'm not that great at it. So yeah, but I'll give you a little time lapse of me creating my simple animation, but you guys can uh, create it on your own. And yeah, so here we go. Okay, so now once you've got your full animation and you're happy with it, let's come down here and go down to the three dots down here and then now I'm going to select this and actually before I do this if you want your animation to be looped so if you want it to be constantly repeating then you hit the uh, loop here down here uh, you hit the loop animation down here and you select it and then now if I was to play this you can see when it gets to the end it plays again but my animation looks a little bit weird there because I'm lifting my hand up originally so we don't want that uh, well I don't want that at least so I'm going to come down here to the three dots I'm going to go set animation priority and I'm going to do an action and then now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go export and then now we have, we're basically uh, creating it. So we're creating it like a game, like we're publishing this. So, so I've got the title here and I've got uh, the creator as me and I'm going to submit it. And then now what you want to do is you want to copy this ID. Well, you want to come and click on the link. And as you can see over here, I now have uh, my animation that I can see over here. So I'm going to come up here to the URL and I'm going to select this and I'm going to copy it. And then now we can come back over to our, uh, to our Roblox Studio and we can actually paste the animation ID inside of this. So let's come down here and let's paste animation ID in there and enter. Oh, just to make sure, you don't want to be uh, playing this animation, like you don't want to be playing the uh, animation there, you want to be playing the loaded animation, the anim, or whatever you called it. So you need to double check that because that was one of the errors I got. But anyway, now we can test it out. And when I hit Q, you should see, there you go, my animation plays and it looks really bad. <laughs> but as you can see, I am playing the animation when I hit Q. So we can come down here and we can do the detection. So I can do something like print and I can do um, Q was pressed or something like this. And then now we can come down here and open up the output down here. And you should be able to see that when I hit Q, Q was pressed. And then we can keep hitting this. And as you can see, it keeps being repressed. It keeps being pressed. Hey guys, that was it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something new. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.